ready? I'm ready, one, two, three. Welcome to the Sports Wrap with George and Ringer, show number three. Uh, last week our whole show was there, so uh, that's always a good sign to know that uh, the producer, the camera person, got his, uh, got his job done right. And uh, so, so what did we learn since, since we spoke last Thursday? Well, I, I tell you, I have to I have just ask you a couple questions now. Do we have every intention, this being Thursday, that you're going to go and do a live broadcast of the volleyball game in Little Fork? Well, as soon as we get done taping this show, yes, on Thursday night, I am jumping in the car and driving to Little Fork, and we will be on KCC Live. And, of course, that means that broadcast will also be available online at kcc-tv.org. And, of course, that game will be up there that you can watch on replay until our next broadcast, which is live broadcast, which is next week. So um, that's going to be our first volleyball game. Uh, I was informed we're going to have two camera people. So uh, we're, we're going to see what happens. Uh, this, and, uh, is, this is moving along quite quickly. Quite, quite nicely. We're, yeah. uh, we're working on things. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. See if we maybe we can pick up a, another volleyball game or two. I personally like to see is maybe if this, you know, if nobody minds, maybe a, a swim meet or, you know, if you get out there, you could do the high pike because I got to do the, <laughs> I got to do the scorekeeping at that. So, but uh, anyway, yeah, we're we're hoping that the volleyball game goes well tonight down in Little Fork. So it's going to be our first road broadcast. Um, so we'll see how things go. Jay Boyle, who's the producer, he's he's going to try out some things tonight. So hopefully it all works out and it all pans out. Hey, I'll tell you what. I know that this is, uh, you know, serious stuff and all, but I'm having a heck of a good time, and I just like, uh, you know, to get the kids on the air and, and for us to do our show and do our thing. This has really come out a lot nicer than I had anticipated, so yeah, here we are. Here we are. So where are we going to start? You want to start with college football? You want to start with the Vikings? You want to start with the Broncos? Let's, are, start, let's start with the Broncos. Let's start with the Broncos, George says. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that we've got an agenda here, of course, and yeah. uh, the Broncos football team plays uh, Greenway, Nashua, Kewatin down at Old Dixon Barley Field. What are the two guys' first names? Dixon? Lou Barley. And Lou Barley? How about Dixon? What I was, can't remember don't, what uh, Mr. Dixon was, but uh, I do remember Lou Barley. <laughs> And he was the coach when I played against uh, Greenway, and I was on the field against Greenway three different seasons, and we lost to him three different times. So, uh, uh, yeah, so oh, I don't like to hear that, George. No, 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 no. I tell you, you go to Greenway, it's always been tough. They're going to come at you. They're going to come at you strong. Last year they had a very good team, uh, an excellent passer, and they come back and they still have they have a kid named D'Angelo Jefferson. Does that ring a bell? That definitely rings a bell. I, I remember him making a couple of moves and doing a couple of things. Yes. Yeah, he's big and fast and strong, and he, he'll play a tailback position. You know, Bobby Schwartz runs those UMD offenses. I'm not sure Malaski ever would have recognized that stacked eye that he runs, and I, I you know, that's, I like to do other things with that third back, but but the, they seem to run it fairly effectively, and if, uh, if, if Jefferson gets to the corner, if he gets to the edge, if, uh, if, if, uh, if he's leaving, if he's even, he's leaving. He's gone, <laughs> and he'll and he'll make that turn and he'll go. But but that's their major running threat. They have two different quarterbacks, one of which is a Cumberland. So I'm thinking this yeah. is Ray's grandson. But two senior quarterbacks. They split the duties. Uh, 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 Jagger Nash, isn't that a great name? Jagger Nash. It that is. is a quarterback's name, isn't it? A quarterback's name. And uh, and Blake. Uh, what is it? Blaze Tumberland, which it's got to be. It's actually Blaze. It is Blaze. It's Blaze. Blaze? Yeah, I think okay. that's how they pronounce it. I think I found that out last year. I think okay. it's called pronounced Blaze Tumberland. Yeah. And then this team is just tall. They have two six foot seven guys, a six foot six, yeah. a couple of six foot five. D Dylan DeChampeau is, uh, is, is, is kind of a, is a big deal. Dylan DeChampeau. Now, what a name to say. I love saying that name, and I was going to get to that one. But yeah, he's, he's, uh, He's six five, um, and a very fine athlete. And very so, good basketball player and uh, a good trackster. Uh, the Greenway basketball coaches just got to watch these boys and just hope they all get through without getting injured. But they're they're a very tall team. 
they're lean, they're not that big. There's a couple of big boys, but uh, uh, you know, for the most part, they just run well. The Broncos had that same issue last week against Moose Lake Willow River. They ran into some tall, wide receivers yes. and uh, ha had some issues there. And the Broncos did lose 32 to nothing last Friday down at Moose Lake or down at Willow River, I should say. And uh, I don't think it was a 32-point ball game. No, I don't think so. I don't think it was either. On the other hand, I watched Pine City and Greenway, and they lost 26 to 16, 24 to 16, and and those teams were real close. Okay. And it was it was it was less than a touchdown or an eight-point thing. Uh, uh, Pine City was able to score early, and uh, and after that. Greenway just kept on digging back and digging back, and, and they almost got it. So they're, we, you know, they're one and two, but they're a very good football team. Uh, I, and I got to tell you, this Pine City ran almost total T formation, which Ooh. was kind of fun to watch. Because Pine City a few years ago was running what the Broncos yeah. are running, four right. wides and shotgun and all the rest. Of that they're stuff. both tight now. Well, that's very interesting. Um, I'll say this: How does Greenway, in your mind, compare to Moose Lake Willow River? Uh, and, and they're they're not as good. Okay. Uh, they don't have the, they don't have the backs. I don't think they have the offensive line. Um, I, I don't think that that Greenway is as good a football team as they were last year. Uh, you know, and I take a look. He does have 12 seniors though, and that's uh, and that's the difference. So you know, and like you know, like you say. Some of these guys are really good basketball players. They're really good athletes. So if their athleticism overcomes whatever we can put up against them. Also, they run that 4-4, basic 4-4 defense that they've been doing forever. And, um, and so if we're going to run against that, we're going to have to have some extra blocking. We'll see what the Broncos decide to do against that. It'll be an interesting game tomorrow night. We had thought about having that game uh, live on the air, but uh, too many obstacles, too many unknowns to be able to try to pull that off. So uh, we'll shoot for next Friday when the Broncos ho host Masabi East next Friday night. And then, of course, the following week, we'll be back on with Bronco football again for homecoming, which is on uh, October 4th as they take on Two Harbors. And Two Harbors, not a bad team no. because they were able to take down Esco uh, last exactly. week in a and kind of a, a, a thriller 38-34. So mm -hmm. now the Broncos will have their hands full the next few weeks. They and, will. Uh, and we'll see where they go from there. Uh, anyway, I'll tell you what. Bob Schwartz, he's got a nice team. I call them the the, the green machine, especially when they're home. Oh, they no, come no. Out There's only those... one green machine. That was Toy Vola Meadowland. So anyway. <laughs> uh, but I don't ever remember when Greenway was an easy game. That being said, the Broncos lead the series 35-26-1, and, one, and uh, uh, it would really be nice to get up a 36 win because, in case you haven't noticed, they're catching up. Yeah, they. Uh, it would be nice for the Broncos to uh, get, get a win here, uh, stay above that 500 mark, uh, and, and this, this, this win against the 3A school would go a long ways in the seeding process. It would. Uh, towards, the, the, towards the playoffs to get started on the 20, uh, 22nd of October. So we'll see what the Broncos can do with it. Uh, as I mentioned, there's no easy games against Greenway. It's going to be physical. They're going to be in your face. I think we have a physical team to a certain extent. When you throw the ball 43 times in a game like we did last week, though, yes. that kind of gets you wondering how physical of a team. And that's nothing against the coaches or whatever. I'm just saying when you do it, when you throw the ball that many times, and they had to in the second half because they were down so well, much. Well, you're, uh, you're coming to rely. We're coming to rely on, on, on pretty good receivers, and and and, and Larson and 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 and, and uh, Sorry, and some of the rest of these guys. They catch the ball real well and they fly. Uh, Koenig, another one. These guys are all good receivers. We still have to jam that in. I like that quarterback carrying the ball in front of those two big running backs. I agree with you there, and uh, I. I, it, the game has changed, and, and people already know this, but when the Broncos are throwing their passes, very few of them are throw the ball 25 yards down the field. They're a, a pop to the outside. Yeah. They're a five-yard pass, so it's almost like running a quick quick pitch. So a lot of their passes essentially are runs. Uh, just They just, yes. look, just look a little bit different. Uh, did you have a chance to look at any, any of the other uh, high school games tomorrow night? Because I didn't. I, I didn't look. 
No, no dice on that. Okay. No, I, no, I really didn't either. That, <laughs> Just yeah. concentrating on this one. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk a little college football. Let's talk. Did, yes. did you watch the Gophers last Saturday? I afternoon? did watch the Gophers. In fact, or were I, you watching Army at the same time? Because they were I, on at the same time. So they you, were you, they were at the same time. But I happened to, remarkably enough, happen to be here and try to take the. If you can try to take the Gophers. Um, off the TV here, I, I would have uh, I would have been tossed out. So I watched the Gophers here, um, I, you know, and I mean I got a couple of notes. You might believe this, but uh, does it does one of your notes say they got lucky? Oh my lord! <laughs> uh, they scored with thir 13 seconds left in the fourth quarter after Georgia Southern pushed them all over the field the second half. And well, hey, wait a minute now. I'm going I'm, I'm 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 to stir the pot with you a little bit, okay? With about seven minutes to go, yes. the Gophers are up by eight, yes. ready to kick a field goal to go up by 11, yes. okay? Now, they're, they're supposed to be ahead by two scores at that point, but unfortunately, the field goal gets blocked and gets returned for a touchdown. 45 yards, yeah. The next, the next series, yes. somehow, uh, what's his name, Morgan, Fumbles the ball on a, on a sack and they pick it up and they take it in for a touchdown to, for the yes. Gophers to fall behind. So, wouldn't you say Georgia and Southern got lucky a little bit? Oh, you bet they oh. got lucky. <laughs> but that being said, yeah. what did they have? About four minutes left at the yeah. end of the about game, and, yeah. and that's 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 when Morgan got lucky. And, that's... and he got lucky because he had Tyler Johnson and Rashad Bateman and that Peterson and and a, and, a, and a pretty nice run from uh, um, from Rodney Smith. So you know, I mean, he's got some. Tools there. Also, uh, Falela. Falela. I was always going to pronounce that. He was. He's that offensive tackle. I s started to see him come off the ball a little bit. And if and, and they have to run against these guys. But like I told you before, Southern Georgia Southern is a team that knows how to win. They've been winning for years. We've just never lost to a Sun Conference game, and so everybody kind of just slacks, but I knew that this was going to be a close game. Yeah, I didn't have any doubt about that it was going to be close. It was too close. It was closer than it needed to be, yes. but uh, I will say this. Uh, uh, am I worried about the Gophers? Yeah, a little bit. Is it what they I kind of expected? Well, if you've been a Gopher fan for any length of time, this is what you kind of expect. Everything, nothing's easy. Nothing's ever nice. Nothing ever uh, works out uh, the way that we want it to. But having said that, the Gophers are three and zero. I don't care if you won by seventy or you won by two. And last week on the show, if you watched, you might remember I was breaking up Maryland. Well, Maryland. Yeah, um, Maryland peed down their legs last week, folks, after I bragged them up. And, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, when all is said and done, the Gophers are 3-0. And, oh, and Maryland, who may very possibly be a better team, is 2-1. And, one, and yeah. so so we'll see what happens. Yeah. How about Army? How did Army do last Army, week? I got, I got no idea. Army played Texas San Antonio, another team that is, like, full of local talent. Now, how much talent comes to college football from Texas and South, South Texas, lots. And it's all fast, and a couple of them are pretty nasty linebackers and linemen. So so they went 13 to 13 at halftime. Now, uh, uh, Kelvin Hopkins, the quarterback, got himself bunged up against Michigan. And so they, they had a, a guy named J Japori Law. He's a true freshman, and he comes in, and he likes, they start running a lot of uh, um, opposite side rollouts and opposite side little bootlegs and, and you know and run them one way and go in the other he runs for a touchdown he's starting to pick up the pace and an army at the second half started hammering the defense started coming alive and they walked away with 31 13. this week they play morgan state uh so it's uh it's um it's another win for Army. It's another win for Army. Well, if, on their way to 11 and one at the end of the season, right? Well, I don't. I, I mean, I, I, Air Force or Navy is the only teams that I could see that beat them. Uh, and and you know, I'm not going to go there yet. We still have a long time before. Well, as long as you brought up Air Force, they play tonight. Yes, they do. Again, against you, Boise uh, State. I, can't, I was sure you'd be wearing the Boise State shirt tonight when I, when I showed up, but. Uh, so, it, so who are you? Who are you? Who are you rooting for tonight? I, I, you know, that's a tight one. But I, I, I've got these relatives in Boise, and we've 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 been there and saw the stadium, and and uh, and I'll tell you, they won my heart when they beat Florida State. Sure. And it's just like these young kids are really something. But Boise State.
has had that you know character for the last 10 years you didn't know what they were going to come up with they started winning big games on on swinging gate offenses in the end zone they, they would do anything to win and do a lot of That's crazy what you things do, man. and they still are doing it so they're fun to watch um, on the other hand air force is not a bad team they get this got a great aerial attack uh, and so uh, a, a Boise State could have everything that they needed in terms of Boise right now this week is coming across 20th in the nation and so I, I, I think they'll do all right but but Air Force is no give me a couple other big college games this weekend uh, in the in the big boys Michigan's at Wisconsin oh let's, number 11 versus number 13 uh, I've got that down there and so what do you think of that uh, I, I, well, everybody. Well, I don't like either one of the two teams. I mean, let, let's. You're, you're making me whatever. I think. I, I think Wisconsin's overrated at 13. I don't think they're the 13th best team in the nation. I agree. Uh, whatever. Michigan has fallen to 11. I would say that, that that might be right in the 10 to 20 range for Michigan. So having said that, I think Michigan wins this. It is on the road at uh, Camp Randall. That's going to make it tighter. It's it's probably a field goal game. Michigan wins by a field goal. I think I can go along with that. Okay. Then we go right down the list here, and I've got Auburn, Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, Texas. But I want to stop and say Notre Dame at Georgia. I Notre think, Dame at Georgia. I think this is a, this is a must game for Notre Dame. Oh, if Notre they, Dame wants it, yeah. Any part absolutely. of this situation, this is yeah, the game they got to win. They're out of it. They're out of it. They're out of it. They're out of it. They don't have any chance to play for a national championship. No. no. So the, the, it comes this third week, and uh, and they got to go on the road to do it. And you got to go to Atlanta to do yeah. it. It's a tough. It's a tough billing for Notre it's, Dame. It's, it's, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, that is definitely the probably the highlight game of the week there uh, between yeah. Notre Dame and Georgia Saturday uh, night. Saturday night, seven o'clock on CBS. Yeah. Uh, Auburn, Texas A and M. That. Ought to be. Uh, I, I like to use this term, a slobber knocker. Uh, I, I think you'll uh, you'll see that game will uh, will uh, will be a very interesting game. Uh, so lots of good things to watch on Saturday. I'm going to get to watch probably about none of it because there's other things to do this Saturday and. Uh, uh, I have a wedding on my uh, with my family oh, this boy. weekend, so uh, I, I, I'm heading down south to uh, to go take care of that and uh, and uh, and do those things as well. And of course, uh, I will talk about Merlin Holm. Um, he uh, is leaving our community after. Oh. I saw him the other day. You did? Yeah. How do, how do you look? Well, he was sitting in the chair saying hi and, and big smile on his face. So. Typical Merlin, then, oh, is what man, you're trying to I tell me. We do miss him around here. Well, he's, he is guy. moving to Rochester, and I know they're having a little uh, going away party for him at the Elks uh, Saturday at 1 o'clock. So I got to stop by and uh, and uh, give my uh, goodbye to uh, to Mer Merlin on his, on his uh, new... Uh, trek down to Rochester and everything else. Uh, uh, one of those guys who is a Bronco historian, uh, I Our find excellence. myself in that in that situation. So I have a lot of respect for what uh, Merlin has done, the things Merlin knows, the things Merlin remembers. Uh, it, it is uh, it is amazing. And when we had our Hall of Fame meetings, he'd come in with a folder about this thick. He'd have a picture on somebody that, that we were talking about. So uh, always good stuff. I want to highlight just for a second on a, my my other favorite topic, UMD and Bemidji. Yeah. Uh, uh, UMD um, played Minnesota State at Moorhead last week, and they wound up running up 590 yards. And you weren't uh, surprised at that number, were you? No, I no? wasn't. I'm going to tell you, John Larson is still the best quarterback in northern Minnesota. That being said, Bemidji went down to the University of Mary, Tim, and they beat him 52 to seven. Now, Bemidji continues this weekend by going to Crookston, and they play Crookston for uh, the Hubcap Trophy. The Hubcap Trophy. The Hubcap Trophy. There's a tidbit for you guys. I'm telling you. You Who didn't knew? know that. I did one? not know that. No. Uh, Bemidji leads the trophy series 14 to one, uh, and I'll tell you what. And. Of course, former Bronco Nathan McRoberts is doing the punting for the Crookston Golden want to do that. Eagles. He will get some work this Saturday. Yeah, yes. more than likely. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you, Bemidji's got a senior quarterback. Last week he had 17 completions for four touchdowns, and he is a passer. Uh, they, um, they've opened every game now. 
opening drive they've scored a touchdown. Wow. And it's just you know what that it's does when you're a good. A, I mean, I've seen you do it, and so you know it's it's one of those. Yeah, we like to do that. Yeah. The defense <laughs> they call the gang green, and they're ranked fourth in the nation. And of course, like I have down in my line there. Mr. McRoberts may be busy. He could be very busy, and uh, we'll, we'll see how uh, things go go in that game. And, of course, you mentioned UMD this week's down at St. Cloud State. Uh, we're familiar with that neck of the woods. You went to school there. I went to school at St. Cloud State. and uh, But the Bulldogs come home with another win. Well, they probably do, but, uh, but that being said, and I don't want to be pessimistic, but going to St. Cloud was never a give me either. No, no. And so, you know, I mean, I saw... Ted McKnight, when he was running lose down at St. Cloud State, and uh, it's 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 one of the things where he goes. They go down there. They have an opportunity to catch another win, and now they're in pretty good shape to set up for any national tournament because they are really right now playing the best football I've seen UMD play since their championship team. And uh, hard, hard to believe that's I think been a lot, eight years, eight or nine years since they last time yeah. they won the national championship. Yeah. I think. 2010, so nine years. So. Yeah, and it's and it's and it's John Larson. He's he's, he's everything. An amazing quarterback. He's everything. 590 yards last week. He a uh, uh, 390 yards. Um, uh, uh, he ran passed for 390 yards and rushed for 100. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. No. What else you got on the uh, college football scene before we? Uh, before we change gears uh, in your well, notes, there, you know, I'll tell you what. Uh, I should mention before before I forget again, the Gophers are off this weekend. They are. They we, are we, they've we, got we did to not buy. mention that. So. They've got to buy it. Uh, you know, I, I, and I don't mean to come back on this, but this is this transfer portal that I've been reading so much about oh boy. and hearing so much about. I mean, if a kid comes in, doesn't like the color of the uniform, or the food isn't really good over in the dormitory, they go down and they can file to, to pick another school that they want. Some of these kids are coming in and, and, and signing tens, attenders to go to a school, and before they even walk on campus, they skip off to another one. I think sometimes now this is this this gives the athlete a little say in what's going on, but it's one of the things that I think can be abused as well. Yeah, I, I think I think I, I think I can speak for you. I think we're kind of both traditionalists of, yes. of the old way. That's the way we were, and you pick the school and just just to be able to pick up and leave necessarily isn't the right thing. However, having said that, kids. That aren't athletes can just pick up and leave their school anytime, anytime and either. go anyplace else. Yeah. So I understand the other side of it. Uh, it does make it look like sometimes, um, yeah, I get mad at the coach and, and rather than trying to work it out or whatever, I just pick up and, and, and say, see you later. And a lot of coaches, unless you make a grave error, aren't going to take your scholarship away. Even if you, even yes. if you fall flat on your face, even if you're a top athlete and you have horrible numbers or whatever else they're going to keep giving you that scholarship because whatever that, that, that they're true to their word about that and yes there are times when parties have to split but uh the kids leaving now it it, it it makes it feel it feels like we're watching the nba or the or the nfl where they can just leave and whatever else and 17 division one quarterbacks switch schools yeah. and uh you know and and i sit down and i think Okay, you're a junior in college. You've had a pretty good career. You might, it's your turn to start, and all of a sudden the school goes gets a true freshman that's going to be a Hall of Famer. And all, where you at? Now you're holding the bag. Also, but the, from the other side, the coach. I know how much investments these coach make into the kids, and they and they do. And and for the most part, you know the kids are they're treated real well. They're given an opportunity for an education. I would like to see some of these other kids get a little bit more uh, in terms of, you know, it's not right for a kid to play in a bowl game and his parents not be able to afford to go watch him play. There's 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 yeah. things like that that you know you, 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 there should could be, but those could be negotiated situations. I just think that maybe each program is going to have to get a person in that program that's going to. Uh, keep track of this so the team has some organization about what's coming when what's going now it's 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 all right for a coach to say to a kid I don't mind having two really good quarterbacks 
Unfortunately, the kids looking at it saying, "Well, if I'm going to get to the NFL, how yeah. do I, how do I, how do I sit behind yeah. somebody and wait my or turn?" And uh, it's tough. It's tough. I do have one more thing to say. One though. more thing. Okay, and this has to do. Last Friday we went to we went to um, Willow River. Willow River. Three of the guys that were on the Bronco team picked up their fishing rods in the morning and went to Lake Pekegama and they competed in the state team championship and they finished seventh. Preston Benedicts, just a couple of ounces from catching the biggest fish. But these guys all went out and you know, and I, I, I remember after a football game, if you were hobbling, we'd go up partridge hunting or go in the woods or do some other thing that I thought, way to go guys. They worked really, really hard yeah. for this. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about um, Harder and Loveless and, and, and Glowak. And we talk about going fishing. Well, this is a little, this is, it, it's work. I, I, I watch, you know, you, you watch these guys go and bass fish it. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're busy. You're, yeah. it, it's a, it's a mental drain, maybe more than a physical drain, I think. It's, it, it's in here, so yes, kudos. Okay, just one more thing. One more. We're going to the mega, the Malacca mega meet tomorrow, or at least I am. My friend Randy Furman has 170 teams, 6,700 kids running this, this meet. And so uh, he invited me to go down, and we're going to be in the area on, Friday, on Saturday, so we're going to go see that. Other than that, though. That, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. All right. What do you think about the Vikes and Kirk Cousins before we... Uh, uh, I, it just goes to show you that professional people can uh, make serious errors. And that was uh, that was a serious error as I've seen a professional quarterback make in quite a while. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing about that, if it was fourth down, yeah, you got to try it. If it's third down, yeah. But on first down... <laughs> No, I got and, a, and, and, I got a Delvin uh, Cook in my back backfield. Well, okay, you know? so we can't blame that on Kirk Cousins, though. Oh, no, no, I mean we got we got to hold the offensive coordinator a little bit. Oh yeah, uh, uh, oh, it was a lousy call. It was a it was a lousy call. Lousy call. How about this? And I read this in the Minneapolis paper the other day. Our brand new center, Garrett Bradbury. Yes. yes. Uh, we all were very high on him. Heard all these great things about him. Do you realize that last week, out of 33 centers that got graded, he was ranked 33rd? 33rd. Is he a rookie? He's, he, he's, a he's the rookie North out of Carolina? North Carolina, Carolina State, and uh, all we heard was how good things were going to be. He had yeah. two two pretty significant holding calls uh, yeah. late in the game, and uh, I just I just got to throw it out there that for a guy who we thought maybe was the next coming of Mick Tinglehoff or something, uh, he's had a tough start. Uh, uh, like I said to get ranked 33rd. That, that, that that's, that's out of 33. There are things to iron out. There are things to iron out, and the offensive line, who we we're hoping were going to be better, did not look very good last week. I really question whether uh, Kirk Cousins. I know he was four for 14 at half, and I was looking on the Twitter world and on Facebook world, and everybody was gouging the four for 14. But boy, the parts of the game that I watched, I didn't see many guys open. No, they, uh, they they were they were. And I mean, there were tight. guys open at times, but there was a lot of time when he was either on the run or there was nobody open, and so. Um, yeah, oh, it, it was, it, it's, it was a, it's a team game, and and I know he's taking a lot of heat, and he's basically came out and said this week, I know that if I don't play better, I'm not going to be playing. His teammates need to need to come up and help him as well. Well, and, but I mean, I'm sitting around thinking, you know, this is right now the, one of the greatest rivalries in, in pro football. If, if the only one I can think is the Bears in the pack, yeah. but but the, the Vikings in the pack. There's so many people that go to each other's games wearing the Viking uniform, wearing the pack. And, I actually know people that were cheering for the pack. I don't talk to them, of course. Yeah, exactly. But, you know. <laughs> Have you ever seen a defense, the Vikings defense now I'm talking about, that goes and gives up three straight touchdowns to then essentially shutting the other team down for like 11 or 12 drives? I mean, Green Bay got a sniff every once in a while, but the defense was, was out of their minds well, they after did, the first the quarter. Linebackers, if linebackers core were getting most of the tackles, and, and, and right they should. Those linemen are there to keep those guards off your off your linebackers. We have very good linebackers. If they can be free, they will do the work. And uh, uh, you know, but I, I they just shot them right down. They were getting one or two yards, and it, it was it was actually a pretty good game to watch in terms of that. In my mind, you got to give Mike Zimmer a little bit of credit because whatever he had game planned, 
wasn't working, and somebody made a decision, some, some, some changed up, and uh, they were able to make a big adjustments. So uh, that, that's that, well, that's how that's how you win the big. That's how you win in the NFL. It's who can make the adjustments because, man, those guys are working 18 hours a day. It's, they're scheming new things. You come into the game, you got to be able to adjust. Well, you know, just what kind of influence does the fact that that Zimmer is a, is a defensive person? And he's head coach. I mean, he, 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 are yep. he, is he going to be looking at his defensive coordinator or his offensive coordinator? And all that? I mean, I think he's a heck of a coach, and he really seems to, you know, yep. have control of the situation. But that's going to be a tough situation. I mean, I'm always sticking my nose in somebody's defense. There you go. That's right. Yeah. Minnesota Twins, uh, seven-game uh, magic number as we record this. Uh, get ready to take on the Kansas City Royals for four. Uh, we'll, 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 I would say by Tuesday, Big Miguel Ooh. joined the other what three? Other over four, th four over thirty. Boy, those are that's a lot of dingers. That's a lot of dingers. Yeah, yeah. The only team in Major League history to do that, yes. and uh, we'll see if the see if the Twins can get to the three hundred mark. That's kind of the. I know them and the Yankees are competing. Uh, Yankees hit like seven home runs one game in the last week, and I'm like, geez, Louise, uh, it's kind of scary how that goes. But uh, the Twins, like I said, magic number seven, seven wins combined, or seven wins and or uh, Cleveland losses, uh, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, the, in the next week and a half, because that's all that's left of the regular season. The Twins will take care of business. I just kind of see where they're right now. They're tentatively matched up with Houston, and, uh, you know, Except for Verlander, they can go. They can go with the team. Yeah, we, I was talking about that with somebody the other day. They said, "Let's try to avoid Houston. Let's get the Yankees instead." And I'm like, Whew. "It's it's it, it, it's a tough one." But yes. uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Uh, anything else sports-wise? Uh, I can't think of anything right now. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of stuff going yeah. on, but. Uh, as we're going to do with every show, I'm going to wrap this thing up with a non-sports question. So, uh, as you know, George, very much into the music and very much into the blues. Ooh, I love so, it. if somebody were going to walk into your solarium and had never listened to the blues before, what would be the first album you would pull out for them to listen to? Well, I, I, it would be a relatively recent one, huh? and, it, and it, it, this is a combination between a, a man named Kev Moe, that's his stage name, Kevin Moore. Kev Moe is just an incredible musician, and Taj Mahal. And they put out an album a couple of years ago that's a that's a combination blues and jazz, and I'll tell you it gets you right down to the spine. So that would that would be one that really comes to mind. And and the, and lately, I've I've had these records. My wife bought me five um, uh, volumes of Woodstock music. I almost wore a Woodstock T-shirt, but I, I got this one. Sue found on that and. One of them is Paul Butterfield, and Paul Butterfield Blues Band was there, and he did two or three cuts, and I saw Paul Butterfield in St. Paul a month or so before he died, and uh, he's a harp player, and Paul Butterfield can make you just moan. So I've been listening to Paul Butterfield, but the Kev Moe, the Taj, Taj Mahal, that's not far away, ever. George has also been on the uh, country music uh, oh. series that's been on PBS. Uh, on Channel 8 uh, over the last, started this week. Uh, last night, I finally found about 30 minutes to sit down and I found myself unable to turn the channel when they got talking about Loretta Lynn and Patsy Cline and uh, the whole plane crashes and everything, the tragedies and Johnny Cash and the whole thing. Uh, it had me gripped in and uh, unfortunately I'm not going to see the next two shows, but uh, I, I know you're enjoying it. Oh, it, it, they're really fantastic. You, you can combine history and music and you really see how intertwined this country is culturally because without the blues, without gospel, without um, uh, any of these things, there would be no country music, there would be no rock and roll music, and all come from different cultures. Sure. And it's just, you can see this, you see see Ray Charles I was gonna mention sing Ray. it, you know. And well, and, 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 the, and, and the comment that was made during the show last night that if Ray, Ch Ray Charles made country music, it, it, what it is, what, what it is. Yeah, and I was yeah. kind of like, Man, that, that that's a big that's a big statement because think of all the other biggies that were there. Uh, I can't stop loving you. I remember as a kid yeah. growing up, and that was a really big one. And then and then of course they go they go to um, uh, Patsy Cline, 
and and one of my favorite uh, songwriters, of course, is Willie Nelson. Everybody else too, but she does crazy, and uh, that that is amazing song. It is an amazing song. Little did I, I never knew that the original name of that song was stupid. Stupid, yeah. Stupid. <laughs> instead of crazy, can you imagine how Patsy Klein could have uh, tried to say stupid instead of crazy? Yes, I know. I, I, I saw that too. That, that was, was very interesting. Yes. I think that wraps it up for this week, George. Hey, we'll try it again. We'll be back next week. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.